Our next presentation is from uh, South Mason Conservation, another Ben, Ben Colgan. He's going to present on the project and, and briefly describe a, a variety of specific applications that they're going to be uh, undertaking with us. So Ben, come on up. Got the clicker working again. Okay, thank you, John, and uh, thank you, Ben, as well. I was really looking forward to your presentation to um, to learn a bit more about your process there. So, um, as John said, I'm Ben, also or Ben too, in this room. Um, I'm a GIS analyst here at South Nation Conservation, and um, a large part of my work involves supporting SNC's initiatives through the use of lidar and lidar drive products. Um, so today I'd like to talk to you about kind of how that's done here, um, our future plans for LiDAR, and expand a little bit on Carl's theme of how we actually came about acquiring LiDAR, because it's an important part of the story as well. So um, here at SNC, one of our core mandates is defining natural hazards within our watershed, and probably the most prominent of those natural hazards is floodplain. So, we have a staff of uh, GIS staff and engineering staff whose job it is to define floodplain hazard, and that's done entirely in-house. And one of the key data inputs that we use to model floodplain data um, are LiDAR-derived elevation models. So naturally, um, that makes us very interested in acquiring the most up-to-date LiDAR data that we can find, and even more importantly, ensuring that we have adequate coverage uh, to be able to address those natural hazards like floodplain wherever they exist in our watershed. And so um, to address these gaps in our LiDAR coverage in 2021, SNC led a major acquisition program that aimed to collect new LiDAR um, data, not only within SNC's jurisdiction, but throughout Eastern Ontario. Uh, the idea being that including as many partners as possible would not only generally increase LiDAR coverage throughout the region, but would also drive down the overall cost, making it cheaper and more cost effective for all our partners. Um, so to do this, SNC partnered with six conservation authorities, um, seven upper tier municipalities and 42 lower tier municipalities with the aim of collecting more than 14,000 uh, square kilometers of new LiDAR data in eastern Ontario. In addition to the municipal and conservation authority partners, we also partnered with the federal government, as Carl had mentioned, um, through Natural Resources Canada. And they supplied funding support for our project through the, their Natural Disaster Mitigation Program, um, which helps organizations like us uh, develop floodplain data all across Canada. So I think uh, conveniently, um, SNC's LiDAR acquisition program aligned very well with uh, EOMF and OWA's forestry inventory project, uh, both in timing and with regards to the specifications of the new data. Um, our property team lead here, Pat Pitts, had inquired with the MNRF about the suitability of the LiDAR uh, for use in forest inventory, and they actually directed us towards the OWA and the work that they were doing. Um, from there, SNC signed an agreement in April of 2022 with the OWA to complete the work. And in early 2023, we we're finally able to take delivery of the new data. And I was able to get a copy to Ben in March of this year for his project. So regarding the LiDAR data itself, um, once all of our acquisition agreements were finalized, um, the LiDAR data was collected by the vendor in the fall of 2021 and spring of 2022 um, in leaf off conditions, as Ben had explained earlier. Um, the data was spec to meet the USGS QL0 standard of quality and with a minimum point density of eight points per square meter. Uh, the LiDAR is fully classified, meaning that we can generate LiDAR drive products that describe numerous features across our landscape from bare earth topography, building footprints to of course, forestry related products like vegetation height maps and detailed forest inventories um, like what the OWA is involved in developing. Um, to give you an idea of the level of detail that LiDAR itself provides, I'm going to focus just in on our jurisdiction alone. So for SNC's portion, we collected approximately 2,700 square kilometers of new LiDAR data. And when we take into account the minimum point density of eight points per square meter, it actually means we collected nearly 22 billion points of elevation data. And that's in SNC's jurisdiction alone. Um, so for me, working with LiDAR and LiDAR-derived products is a normal part of my day-to-day -day work here at SNC. Um, and in truth, we're very lucky to have access to this data. 
Uh, the uses that we have for the LiDAR data are numerous and encompass projects and initiatives throughout our organization. Um, this includes initiatives in natural disaster planning and mitigation, environmental stewardship, planning and regulations, and others. Um, we've used LiDAR data to assess the conditions of shorelines along the Ottawa and St. Lawrence rivers, uh, gain a better understanding of the stream's morphology, delineate streams and watersheds, and more accurately identify wetlands and other natural features in our landscape. We've also used LiDAR to plan optimal forest access, and we're hoping to use it to identify and manage invasive species like buckthorn um, within our watershed. And so while LiDAR data is a brilliant tool for identifying current natural processes, um, it even helps us plan for future enhancements to our natural environment, like designing new constructed wetlands and restoring distressed ones, which helps enhance biodiversity and environmental health within our watershed. So um, these are just some of the ways that we're, we're putting LiDAR to use here at SNC, but um, we have really, really only scratched the surface. Um, as new projects and environmental initiatives present themselves in the future, uh, we're confident that LiDAR will play an important role in their success. And so speaking of the future, um, we're very excited to receive the results of Ben's work and, and all the, the students' work as well for their forestry uh, inventory analysis. Um, we have a lot of exciting forestry initiatives in the works here at SNC um, that that inventory data is going to play a major role in, in making successful. So on a watershed scale, our forestry team is in the process of developing a new five-year forest operations plan um, with the aim to provide guidance for all forestry operations during the next planning period, um, like identifying forest stands for thinning, making investment in forest infrastructure, enabling forest restoration efforts, and combating invasive species. An example of how the data supports our municipal partners, uh, SNC's forestry team has been working on a forest management plan for the township of Clarence Rockland. And this plan aims to develop strategies to preserve and enhance natural features on municipal owned land. Um, kind of specifically, it will uh, guide the municipality in decision making for the green infrastructure, um, identify operational needs, assist with tree planting site selection, and preserving and enhancing the urban forest for local residents. So, as I mentioned previously, we've really only scratched the surface of what's possible with the LiDAR data. And in the short period of time since we've taken delivery of it, SNC and partners like the OWA and EOMF have already begun to produce new and innovative products that help us manage valuable natural resources with our environment and protect people and property where we live. So even today, um, new project ideas are, being, are forming based on access to this data and the possibilities that it enables. It's exciting to think um, that with the level of coverage that we now have available, projects like the OWA Forest Inventory have the possibility to expand with new partnerships, as Ben had mentioned. And our project partners all over Eastern Ontario are also thinking about what LIDAR can do and how that can benefit the citizens and stakeholders that they work for. So I think in summary, for us here at SNC, we're very happy with what we've been able to achieve so far. But we're already looking to the future. Um, and we're really thrilled to be able to partner with uh, all the folks from OWA and EOMF today to gain the benefit of their knowledge and expertise and apply that right here at home in our watershed. And that's all.